Hi, I'm Julie and I make videos on how to help children with contamination OCD because I actually have had the experience of supporting my own child with contamination OCD and I've also had the experience of getting it all wrong at the beginning which fed the OCD, spiralled it out of control until it was controlling not just my daughter but the whole family. So that's why I'm now on a mission to try and help as many other parents and teachers to help children with contamination OCD. So first of all, what is contamination OCD? Well, despite what a lot of people seem to think a contamination OCD is, i.e. that it's a fear of germs or dirt, that isn't always the case. It can be a fear of lots of things, including getting ill from contamination or actually catching a virus or anything that's actually going to display symptoms that will draw attention to you from other people. So how do you actually help a child with contamination issues? Well, the one thing I learned not to do was to actually feed it what it likes, and I call it the three R's. That is not to feed it reassurance, because when your child has contamination OCD, or any other OCD for that matter, OCD will get them to constantly ask for assurance, are you reassurance, are you sure you did that, ma'am? Are you sure I did that? So the first thing to do is not to give it the reassurance it craves. The second thing not to do is give it the reaction it craves because OCD absolutely loves an audience and it will get even the most calm person trying to outshout it when your child has an OCD meltdown. So try not to react to it and what I had, the way I learned to do this was to try and think to myself, it's not my child talking, it's OCD's voice. And the third thing is not to get recruited. This is the worst thing I did because I started doing all these bizarre compulsions as well, as did the rest of the family, to stop my daughter getting distressed. But in hindsight, it was the worst thing that we could have done, because in the end, we became totally isolated and totally controlled by this invisible Billy. So what are the best ways that you can help your child with contamination OCD? Well, what I've learned is, first of all, not to give it the three R's that it craves, the reassurance, the reaction, and getting recruited. Also to separate OCD from your child because one of the things I learned after therapy was that by even calling it my daughter's OCD, I was actually showing that it was part of her, whereas in fact it's separate from her. So even give it a name if you need to and address it by name, like I call mine now Hank. And just say, oh, that's Hank talking, I'm not speaking to Hank at the moment. And then eventually will hopefully help your child to also separate it from themselves. And the third thing is to carry out exposure therapy. Now, I know from experience that you could be a long time on a waiting list waiting for professionals to help you, and it can be incredibly frustrating. And in that time, OCD can get a lot, lot worse and harder to treat. And boy, don't I know this from experience. So what I would advise is to actually carry out, start carrying out exposure therapy with your child yourself. This will consist of just getting your children exposed to things that make them feel uncomfortable and actually get them to carry out compulsions because the, this, the, the, event, the result you want from exposure therapy is that you can get your child to be exposed to this thing that makes them uncomfortable without actually neutralising it with compulsions. So the first step that I did with this was to write out a list of all contamination issues that my child wanted to tackle and get them to score it out of 10, with one being the lowest anxiety level, 10 being the most. Then get them to select something off the list. Generally, it's easier to get them to select the lowest scoring item on the list because that'll be, I say, easier to tackle. It'll still be difficult, but it'll be less difficult than the, the higher scoring ones on there. And then start off with that particular item, break it up into challenges, and then break those challenges up into even mini bite-sized tasks or challenges. And then what we also learned as well was to actually reward anyone successfully carried out. Now by this, you're not bribing it. What you're doing is actually celebrating success of actually tackling these issues. All right, so by um, mini bite-sized chunks, what do I mean? Well, for example, it could involve that you say, right, before you carry out a compulsion, you've got to count to 10. So you're at least having 10 seconds of feeling uncomfortable around that exposure. Or let's say, for example, they're using 10 wipes a day. You want to reduce it down to nine wipes. Ask them to come up with a plan of how they're going to reduce it down to nine wipes. The next day, you might want to increase it down, decrease it, sorry, down to eight wipes, etc. 
sometimes if you can't get them to do anything sometimes even writing out the word or part of a word or even putting pictures up around the house of what the thing is that they're most fearing with contamination and just build up to it that way so hope that that's helped as i say on how to help a child with contamination ocd and then explaining a bit more of what ocd is Please feel free to subscribe to my channel and to touch the bell on the side so that you'll be notified of any future uh, videos I make on this topic. Bye for now.